a five judge constitution bench of the Supreme Court of India in a landmark judgment two days ago decreed for the appointment of the chief election commissioner and the other two election commissioners through a new process. The next time an election commissioner is to be appointed, it would not be at the sole pleasure of the Prime Minister of India. A collegium consisting of the Prime Minister, leader of the largest opposition party, and the Chief Justice of India would sit together to make the final selection. The Supreme Court's decision came while adjudicating petitions seeking a more level playing field for the political parties during the elections. The petitioners had argued that as the election commissioners are today appointed by the government of the day, the ruling party enjoys a new advantage in the electoral process. Well, the lights of T and Shishan have been a rarity. A majority of election commissioners have proven to be weak need, mostly towing the line of the party in power. Some may argue that India's electoral process is robust, as evident from the fact that the ruling party has been losing some elections while winning some others. Yes, that is true. That has been the case since the very first election in 1952. No one can say that India's elections are fixed. But increasingly there is evidence that the top leadership of the election commission have been showing lack of fierce independence. Many of them are chosen because they are embarrassingly close to the ruling coterie. There are telltale examples. T. N. Shishan transformed the image of the election commission by scrupulous adherence to the rule book, by showing the powers that be that he was not ready to be brobeaten. But M. S. Dill, who followed him as the chief election commissioner, was a pale shadow, pursuing the policy of least resistance. No wonder, post-retirement, Gill joined the Congress party. He was rewarded with a Rajya Sabha seat and he even became a minister. That was a disgrace for the office of the Chief Election Commissioner. Look at the other side of the story. Take the case of Ashok Livhasa, an election commissioner who came into prominence for opposing the clean cheat, the five clean cheats, not one, not two, not three, not four, five of them given by the chief election commissioner and another election commissioner to the prime minister Modi and the home minister Sa for alleged poll code violations during the 2019 general elections. Lavasa, the dissenter, was soon sent out to the Asian Development Bank. Unlike the Chief Election Commissioner, the two election commissioners do not enjoy the security of tenure. So inconvenient election commissioners are put out of the way. Lavasa would have become the Chief Election Commissioner in 2021. And that would have been problematic for the ruling BJP. After all, if as an election commissioner he showed this gumption to take on the most powerful men of this country, what would he do if he became the CC, Chief Election Commissioner? This must have weighed heavy on the ruling party's mind, so he was eased out. This government wants only those bureaucrats who have demonstrated absolute loyalty, fealty to the ruling dispensation to assume significant constitutional positions. Take the case of Arun Goyal. 
As the apex stood itself noted, it was astonished by the speed with which Arun Royal's name was cleared and notified as the election commissioner. Look at the timeline. On November 27, the Constitution Bench of the Supreme Court takes up the case relating to the Election Commission. A petition questioning the process of appointment of Election Commissioners. On November 18, the next day, Friday, Arun Goyal, a pliable bureaucrat, announces that he has applied for voluntary retirement. After all, his application for voluntary retirement has to go through all the elaborate processes before it is accepted by the government. Usually it takes weeks, if not months, to be processed. This has been the case under all previous governments. This has been the case under this very government itself. Remember the case of Suhas Gark, H.C. Gark? was forced to serve as a power secretary for several weeks even after he had sought instant voluntary retirement when he was sifted out from the finance secretary's position. But lo and behold, Arun Goyal's application was processed in the very same day within a couple of hours. What an astonishing speed! And that's only half the story. The government notified and took up the case of this recently, last hour, voluntarily retired Arun Goel for the post of election commissioner the very same day, the very same hour. And this selection process went through all the paraphernalia. Approved, was approved by the Prime Minister and even the President of India the very same day and the notification was issued the very same night. November 18 was a red letter day. Countries world over should look at this day to see our government's extraordinary efficiency. It was a Friday, the next Monday morning before the Supreme Court began the hearing, Goel had already taken oath as the election commissioner so as to preempt any stay by the Supreme Court about the future appointments. See this alacrity and contrast this with another example. The same government had taken months to notify the name of a chief justice of a high court as the Supreme Court judge. Just because the just concern had demonstrated as the chief justice that he is not a pliable man. He is not someone who will tow the government line. And that is the name of the game. If you are a cheerleader, you are embraced instantly. But if you show a bit of spine, then you will be sent to the dot house. That is the clear message today. Fall in line or face the consequences. It's a scenario that's dangerous for our democracy. There is a concerted attempt today to position pliant officers in key constitutional positions and to weed out the inconvenient ones. That's a danger lurking ahead that our democracy might eventually become a casualty. We must remember that the election commission is too important a body to trifle with. Yes, the election commission today is not a glaringly partisan body yet. But the way things are moving, days are not far off when the election commission will be packed with manifestly yes men. Remember the case of Venezuela? How Hugo Savage, a very popular leader, brought in openly partisan men into the electoral body of Venezuela and completely undermined the electoral process. If we do not take preemptive measures now, India may very well go the Venezuela way. That's why the Supreme Court judgment on March 2nd is a welcome step to salvage our rapidly eroding democratic culture. It may be that this government may make a law, it has a formidable majority in parliament in Lok Sabha, 
nullifying the SC verdict and reaffirming the current system of appointment of the EC members by the executive. It's also possible that the government may completely ignore the SC degree for the time being as no new appointments need to be made before the next crucial general election in May 2024. In either case, the Supreme Court verdict will become a dead letter. So be it. The Apex Court has done its job in highlighting the dangers ahead. Let us hope our democracy survive in the days to come.